Okay, today I'm going to do a presentation on Dr. Charles Morton, some of my findings that I had. Uh, he was the second uh, principal librarian at, that worked at the British Museum. He worked there until his death in 1799, born in 1716. Um, we don't know who his father or mother were. There are clues and there are guesses, that's about it. He was the father of two children, one being um, Elizabeth Morton, and there are numerous descendants of Elizabeth Morton to this day. Um, some are, that are still uh, listed in the peerage, and then he had a son whose, um, whose mother is, is not clear in my mind, it's supposed to be Elizabeth Pratt. Could be Elizabeth Pratt. I just don't know. So, um, and of course, Charles Carr, we assume is the dad, but there are some statements that maybe, you know, only DNA is going to clear this up. There are some statements uh, attributed to Dr. Charles Morton saying that um, Charles Carr was adopted. Right, so go figure. Okay, so this is a very big subject. It's going to cover a lot of things. There are, are a few small um, items that have a little bit of controversy. I've already brushed on one of them, that being uh, who, you know, mother of Charles Carr and father of Charles Carr. And I'm going to try to, uh, my plan is, is actually to have. Um, my boss, who I'm doing this for, um, not as part of my employment, I'm doing this for fun for my boss. Um, we're going to get a DNA test for him, and we can see how he matches up to Mortons that are not Canadian. And, um, because he's originally from Canada, and he comes out of Canada. He is a direct descendant without a doubt to Charles Carr Morton and as much as the evidence shows Dr. Morton here. Um, I'll get into the evidence about those little controversial things. Um, I just forgot what the other one was. It was a very minor issue. Um, oh, yes. Um, now, Jack's immigrant ancestry, ancestry to Canada was a man named Dr. Edward Morton. He was the father of Savile Edward Morton, who married Maria Collins. And a, a very large portion of his descendants are the subject, or almost entirely the subject, of, of the Collins genealogy, a very good book that was written by um, Cousin of Jack's. Very distant cousin, but yes. Um, okay. Um, Jack is my boss, Jack Moore. Okay, so how did I get all interested in this, or how did I connect um, Jack's immigrant ancestor, Edward Morton, back to Charles Morton? I was getting into that, and I looked up, and I realized I'd already gone over 20 minutes, and the, the, the video was out of sync with my voice anyway, so it wasn't going to work. Um, basically, I had done some research, and I had been able to substanti substantiate sufficient, what I call sufficient competent evidence. That's really an auditing term for accountants, but um, it can be explained, and I'll do that in another presentation, I hope. Uh, it's probably one of the more important ones that, that I plan on doing. Um, back to this Dr. Edward, and we pretty much knew he, the guy's probably English, but there were a lot of Dr. Edwards back in England, and I was just kind of stuck. I couldn't really get anywhere. I had a breakthrough when I went over to Ancestry.com when I'll, I'm pretty sure though, you know, credit goes to at least Anastasia Thompson for um, putting up her findings or her collaborative work with so much uh, Diana Nathan, who she credited, uh, for connecting Dr. Edward Morton in Canada with, um, as being the same Dr. Edward Morton as the Edward listed in the Morton of Kilnercrot entry in um, 
Burke's Landed Gentry of 1852. And it's kind of ironic that it actually landed in 1852. This is actually a transcription of that. And I'll even go into the way I reference stuff and the like. But basically the Edward that we're talking about here, it's not exactly completely clear there, but we're talking about the Edward that was born March 29, 1806. It says married in 1836. That again is transcription. If you want to see the original, you can see that original at Google Books. You just go to, you actually just go, can just go to Google. You can search at Google. Get my camera to stay in one place. Uh, for Morton of Kilnacrot, and you'll find a link to Google Books. And then from that point, you'll be able to see the entry that I'm talking about. I have numerous sources, and a lot of them have come out of, over half of them have come out of Google. <coughs> Other very good supplementary sources came out of Ancestry.com, and some of the um, original marriage records that came out of uh, the London area. So anyway, so I, I was able to substantiate back to Dr. Edward. This connection was mentioned, and I wanted to be able to, to prove it out beyond a shadow of a doubt. Because the, when I looked at the, you know, the census records for 1841, although Dr. Edward already was in Canada, I just wanted to get a an idea of how many Mortons were in England and what the geographical spread was and if there were any families that were about the right age to be this Dr. Edward's father. It's you know much different when you're dealing with that with something like say the Chichester genealogy, you know, you can <laughs> you can go back um, and uh, you can look in a uh, certain census year and you might find only one family of Chichesters in an entire state not being New York in America but um, <laughs> in other areas and you know that probably um, if you could connect that person back to the place where they came from either in New York or Virginia at that time you know you, you can you can find you know if, if there's only one Chichester that's there, and you know who the parents are, kind of, you know, you, you can follow up on it, and eventually you'll find that record is substantiated. Well, with Mortons, there were a lot of Mortons, and there were a lot of Edward Mortons. There were a lot of families that could have been of the right age, and we didn't really have his, we really didn't know how old he was or when he was born. We thought he was born maybe 10 years later. The death record that we have shows him being born, yeah, actually, Ten years after he actually was, had him as 1816 and 1806. So it was really kind of hard to make that connection. So I needed some more details. Um, I needed to look into what I needed to do to get to where I wanted to go. Was I had to look into uh, the, the brothers and sisters of the subject of um, the entry and Burke's Gentry. Uh, the, subject, the subject in the entry is a man named Pierce Morton. I guess I'll just start out with that. I'm going to make my way back to Dr. Charles Morton. And there's, there's probably going to be a lot of videos with, with this series here. And what I did was just looked into some of the events of Pierce Morton's life. And right now I'm going to name off some of the material elements of that. There are a number of different pieces of evidence out there. But I'm going to go into what's material, the things that make the difference. Okay, so Pierce Morton was a father of at least, yes, he was the father of four children, um, one being Pierce Edward, one being John Darcy, one being Francis Armitage, and a fourth that's not listed in the gentry, even though he was his child, Arthur P. Morton. And that Arthur P. Morton, I myself hasn't, haven't seen a lot of evidence about his descendants, but I have seen other uh, work down the other lines, and then, uh, but that's a whole different subject. During, uh, there was one book that, that basically, um, after, I'm not sure if it was 1841 or 51, but the years make sense after I look at it, um, Pierce Morton moved and lived in Haver, France to become a, actually, 
this no, it had to be it had to be in the eighteen early eighteen forties because I can see the birth dates there. In the early eighteen forties, Chris Morton was working as a professor at Haver, France. And the reason why I know that is there is one entry for one student of his that uh, says that he was taught by Pierce Morton in Haver, France. And um, around that time, probably, and the guy graduated around 1845, um, I have the link up at Ancestry, but I couldn't just whip it out right now because I have boxes full of evidence. I'm going to stop and I'm going to continue because I don't want to lose this one.